All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Today, the Adam Seminar has the great pleasure to welcome Professor Sebastião Mardoni Lucena. Professor Lucena graduated in chemical engineering at the Federal University of Ceará and completed his PhD at Campinas State University in 2006, working on molecular simulation. He then proceeded for a research internship on the molecular simulation group at the Northwestern University at the USA. Nowadays, he's a professor at Federal University of Ceará and is the head of the graduate chemical engineering program. His research focuses on adsorption prediction methods based on statistical mechanics, specifically molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo simulations. He works in searching new adsorbents for CO2 capture, characterization of non-structured materials, and absorption-based energy storage. Once again, welcome, Professor Lucena. Thank you so much for being here with us, and please feel free to start our presentation. Thank you. Good morning, almost afternoon. Thank you, Artu, for the kind introduction. Uh, I'm going to talk about two sets uh, of, of papers. Uh, I, sp I split the presentation in two parts, uh, lasting approximately half an hour each part. Uh, the first part is about amorphous materials characterization. We will discuss about the three articles uh, that shows the evolution from our first heterogeneous model to the current model based on reactive molecular dynamics and the application of this reactive model in a complete kernel. Uh, the second part will be about uh, porous materials with regular crystal framework and uh, a new idea of how to characterize, uh, how to use characterization to, to, to extract valuable pore type information. Um, the first part is based in, uh, in, on, on this series of articles from 2010 to 2021. Let me show you how amorphous materials have been characterized. Uh, in 1989, Seaton, Walton, and Quirk proposed slit like homogeneous pores to perform kernel of local isotherms for characterization. Um, in 1993, uh, an improved, improvement of the theory was introduced the non-local DFT. After that, this lit like pores become central to characterization technique, despite the simplification. However, as more and more material were <clears throat> characterized, a, a persistent gap of carbon pores in the pore size distribution around 13 angstroms and poor data correlation became evident. Uh, this described this, this, for example, in the Institute of Oliver in 1998, where he claims a model induced artifact by homogeneous models. Uh, in the next decade, many studies were performed about how to introduce heterogeneities until the first heterogeneous kernel, being proposed by Neymar, Lin, Havikovic, and Matthias in 2009. They include implicit heterogeneities based on Ragnar's parameter in one dimension, the methods known as quench solid DFT. Uh, a couple of years in 2003, Jayel and Oliver also proposed implicit heterogeneity based on periodic variation of superficial energy in two dimensions. The method is known as 2D and LDFT. From this time to now, uh, 
the, the this introduction of heterogeneous kernel that you name second generation kernel open up opportunities to find out how you can correlate the implicit heterogeneity with real defects found in carbon materials. These studies of virtual carbon and kernels uh, can be grouped by defect space like corrugation, edges, and amorphization. Uh, our lab efforts until now is concentrating the explicit model, this, this kind of model, this is explicit model, particularly in the edge heterogeneities. Edges can be obtained in different ways. Uh, Cito in 1999 proposed that we select uh, at random a carbon atom in, in the innermost layer and remove it. They delete from five to 75 atoms in the layer. They do also propose a random selection of atoms. But now besides remove the atom, all the surrounding neighborhoods, uh, atoms that have a distance less than uh, effective defect ratios are also removed. Here you can see how the DDU uh, method works. Uh, DDU delete from five to 50% of atoms in the also in the innermost layer. Uh, the, the method of reverse Monte Carlo can be also considered an edge method because sheets of graphene are arranged in simulation box or produce the experimental uh, radial distribution function of the material. In the final model, the adsorbate is in interacting with the edges in a uh, considerable per volume of the material. Uh, C2, uh, with this model, C2 can could reproduce uh, experimental diffusion coefficient rates between oxygen and nitrogen. Uh, they do reproduce isosteric heat of spherum carbon black series. And uh, Thompson and Gubbins reproduce the nitrogen isothermal of the activated carbon A, M, C, M, D. Uh, when you use homogeneous kernel like, like this we are showing here, um, uh, we have a reference kernel with 24 pores. We can observe that pore size distribution gap that uh, we have mentioned in the poor correlation between experimental and simulate isotherm. You can see this kind of steps between both isotherms. Uh, to, to verify the effect of edge pores in the pore size distribution, we, we introduce a total of six heterogeneous pores, two pores uh, with 25% of delete atoms, uh, two pores with 55 and two pores with 75. Uh, with just the six heterogeneous pores, uh, the gap was eliminated and uh, the correlation between isotherms experimental and simulated is very good as you can see in this graph at, at the right. Let's take a look of this mood kernel. Um, uh, because we obtained that good results, no? this gave us confidence to elaborate a complete edge kernel with different degrees of heterogeneity. Uh, this complete kernel, we would name it mood kernel. And uh, the uh, particular characteristic of, the, of our mood kernel is that beside different degree of heterogeneity, we also include homogeneous kernel uh, this will increase the significance of the kernel. Uh, the kernel has, therefore, a total of 88 local isotherms. We, we la elaborate energy maps to compare uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous surface. You, you can see how the heterogeneous surface presents pitches of different energies 
where the homogeneous water has a uniform energy distribution. Uh, Here you can observe how the multicarrier eliminates the pore gap and improve the data correlation between experimental and simulated isotherms for the carbon PC58. If you apply only homogeneous carbon in this first figure, you can see the gap and you can see the poor fitting between experimental and simulated isotherms. When you change to the edge of multicarrier, uh, the pore gap disappeared and uh, we obtain a very good fitting between the experimental and simulated isotherms. But uh, the multicarrier introduced complexity in the pore size analysis because before you had only one kernel and now you had four different kernels. We figure out how to present this information to be easily understood. We split the different kernels and sum the values of each one. Then for the same activate carbon PC58, uh, we had 36% 36, 36 of volume from the homogeneous kernel, 21% from the edge of 25%, 25% of the edge of 50, and 14% from the edge of 75. We realize that now one can measure the heterogeneity of the material. For example, in the same activate carbon PC58 series, as the burn off increase from PC12 to PC76, the homogeneity decrease. Uh, you, you can see the, the volume of homogeneous kernel goes from 42 in the ho more homogeneous sample, the PC12, uh, and decrease until 21% in the more heterogeneous sample, the PC76. Uh, we, we also found that the mood kernel is useful to discriminate heterogeneity in surface. Uh, this is uh, helpful because topological defects in graphene are investigated with costly techniques like height resolution transmission electron microscopy and scanning tunnel microscopy. Uh, we compare two carbon blacks. The BP280 is a heterogeneous surface and the carbon pack F is a homogeneous surface similar to graphite. We found that uh, the multicarnum gives only 4% of only 4% of the homogeneous volume in the heterogeneous model, that, that is okay, and gives 67% of uh, homogeneous model in, in the carbon that was similar to a graphite. This is a, a, a very good result to, to analyze surfaces. Um, with this success result, Foxon developed a, a more natural strategy to create edges because first you, you are only randomly delete atoms. Uh, from the beginning, when they start to delete these atoms, we, we wonder if exists a less empirical method to perform the test. Th this become possible uh, after two development in the molecular reactive first field reacts FF. Um, uh, the, the reacts FF was developed in 2001, but only in 2008, an optimized reactive first field for carbon combustion was introduced. The combustion first fields was validating the series of experimental system, but a surface from this first field cannot be used in art social studies uh, because they present countless unstable structure like this we are showing here. You can see many unstable carbon rings and also linear carbon chains. 
uh, only when an optimized force field for carbon condensed phase was developed in 2015, we finally could apply reactive force field to mimic the real process of obtention of activated carbon. Because now you can perform a, a regularization on the surface that comes from the oxidation step. Then uh, first we obtain the surface after the reaction, and then we apply regularization in the surface. Uh, the result is that the previous random process of delete atoms is replaced by a chemical reaction of oxidation guided by reactive molecular dynamics in two steps. First step, oxidation, and second step, regularization of the surface. Ooh, here we hear how it works. We build a simulation box with 1,000 oxygen atoms and three layers uh, of graphene with 38 to 39 angstroms. The first layer is frozen and the other layers are free to move. Uh, this move of the oxidation step shows how the process occur. Uh, let's see the movie here. Okay. Uh, the first in, in, impact of oxygen molecules transfer any energy and almost any carbon is consumed. The space lasts approximately 20, 20 picoseconds is the blue area in the graph. Uh, this period is named the induction phase. After that, the surface enters in the self-acceleration phase that lasts approximately more 20 picoseconds is the pink area in, in this graph. Uh, now the, the movie shows the self-acceleration uh, phase. Finally, uh, the terminal phase starts when uh, approximately 35% of the carbon atoms were consumed. Uh, we believe that once the material enters the last phase, the reaction cannot be stopped. Uh, this will bring consequence in the multi kernel modeling that we will discuss further ahead. Now the move is the, is the terminal phase. You see that the the sheet of graphene will also will be consumed. Okay. Uh, after the oxidation step, we perform the regularization step. Here a short move of the regularization. Uh, note that uh, unstable carbon rings and linear carbon chains are eliminated from the surface the carbon proceed in a sequence of reorganization until the more stable configuration is obtained. Uh, these are the energy surface maps after the regularization step with five, 10, 25, and 50% of the carbon atoms consumed. We test each of these surfaces against isotherm of the standard carbon black BP280 and LMA10. That was the carbon used in the validation of the quench solid DFT and 2D and any LDFT kernels. We obtained the best results with the surface whose carbon atoms were oxidized in 25%. This surface gives the best result. Then you proceed with this surface. Uh, before examining the isotherms in the reference materials, uh, it's interesting to take a closer look in some details of the model. Uh, in the figure, we mapped some carbon rings defect. The five carbon rings uh, are the blue, uh, in blue color in seven carbon rings in pink color. Because these defects at 
the in the oxidation process, the model incorporates not only edges, but also corrugation that, that induce amorphization. Uh, the picture in the right is a snapshot of the nitrogen absorbing the surface. Here are the isotherm speed results, as we said earlier. The best match was with the 25% oxidized carbon surface. When you compare uh, quench solid DFT and 2D NL DFT uh, with the experimental data of DBP 280, you, you can see uh, the quench solid result in the black line, the 2D NL DFT result, the red line. Uh, the blue circles, the experimental data, and the orange circles, all model uh, from the reactive molecular dynamics procedure. Uh, when you test the LM, LMEA10 activated carbon, we uh, result in a very, <clears throat> a, a very fitting. Uh, the experimental isotherms, the, the, the purple circles, almost coincide with the orange uh, circles with our model. Uh, you can see the Queen Sol DFT in the black, black line. Uh, a second test was performed with experimental isosteric heat of carbon black sterling 1500. Again, we found a superior performance of the reactive model compared with the implicit quench solid GFT model and an explicit Rampant model. The, our, our result is from the orange circles. The experimental data is the black cross. The quench solid GFT is the purple line. And another explicit model, the Rampant model, is the green squares. You see they really a very good uh, fit in between our sur surface and the experimental data. One last observation. Uh, it's important that the method of oxidizing with the reactive force field result in surface with similar performance related to adsorption. Then we test 10 different iterations and tube oxidation of 25% of the carbon surface and obtain similar results of isotherms. Here, the isotherms and here, the isosteric heat. This is important because demonstrate the reproductivity of the technique. Now we will compare the performance of a complete kernel of reactive model with the quench solid DFT and some new investigation that expand the kernel application. Uh, before discuss the pore size distribution, it's interesting to pay attention in some local isotherms of selected pores. For small pores like the seven Angstrom pore, we found the highest variation between quench solid DFT e reactive model. As you can see, the quench solid is the red line and the reactive model is the blue dotted line. We, we also include the homogeneous uh, isotherms for, for comparison. When you increase the, the size of the pores, the divergence decrease, but uh, we also Note some difference. Again, the red line is quench solid DFT, the uh, blue dots are the reactive model, and the black line is the homogeneous model. Uh, this is this again the, the, the complete kernel. And uh, uh, now we will analyze again the activate carbon. PC58, previous presented in the multi-kernel section. Uh, our reactive kernel present um, a perfect 
fit uh, between experimental and simulate isotherms. Uh, uh, just like the Quensor DFT, with naked eye, we can't we can see difference between the the two models. Uh, what happened? Oh, it, it's, it's okay. the, the charge of the... <laughs> okay, okay, the battery. Okay. Okay, to, to, to plug in the, the computer. Okay. Um, our reactive can represent a, a perfect fit. Uh, with naked eye, you can see the difference. So we need a graphical representation of, of the absolute errors to see the difference. Uh, here is the graph of that absolute error. Uh, we, we can observe a better fitting of the quench solid DFT at low pressure and a worse fit uh, at high pressures. Uh, about the pore size distribution, uh, this, this graph here, uh, the, the range of pores are similar, but the reactive model, uh, the blue bars, predict increased volume in the small pores, then quench solid DFT. Uh, a, a significant observation is that quench solid DFT is not present pore gaps. It, it, this is very interesting. Quench solid is uh, full in all range of pores. Uh, 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 we believe that those discrepancies in the pore size distribution are consequence of nitrogen isotherm divergence in small pore range showed previously. It's also important to note that although we obtained an excellent fit between experimental and simulate isotherm, uh, the fit did not guarantee the absence of, of, of pore gaps in, in the model. With an explicit heterogen surface, you can test different models of nitrogen isotherms, for example. You can test United Atom model and Atom Atom models because this cannot be done with GFT methods. It is an opportunity to test a hypothesis from GDU previous study that showed that large discrepancies in pores isotherms if you use United Atoms or Atom Atom model uh, in, in this first graph from the DDOE studio, you observe that the same pore fuse in very different pressure. If you just change, change the, the, the model, so one, United Atom fuse after the Atom Atom model. But here are uh, some interesting thing. Uh, in the picture in the right, we test the same pores with the reactive model and the filling pressure vanish. Uh, the difference with filling pressure vanish. We conclude that the filling pressure difference uh, found by DDU uh, is caused almost ex exclusively by the homogeneous surface model. Uh, when you change to a heterogen model, you, you, you don't have any difference or oh, small differences. Okay, uh, now in the second part, uh, let's do with a new characterization strategy to I got now for well-defined crystal structure. Uh, the presentation is based in our publication, the Industrial and Engineering Chemistry Research, published this year. Uh, zeolites with small pores, such, such as uh, 
NEA LTA or Chabazite K or Clinoptilolite, any of these zeolites, uh, have their characterization with nitrogen at 7,7, kind of unfeasible because the nitrogen molecule is not able to overcome the diffusional barriers uh, at such cryogen temperatures. Uh, also, the characterization of aging process, such as uh, coke deposition, for example, uh, are as compromised if nitrogen as at 7, 7 Kelvin is used as a probe molecular for the same reason. CO2 at 273 Kelvin does not have the diffusion problem. And another advantage is that as CO2 interact more strongly with the framework, it is possible to identify specific pore type sig signatures, both due to the variation of silicon and aluminum ratio, as well as the location of existing species of the cations. This is an interesting thing. Um, as each cavity has its particular distribution of cations, our proposal is to isolate the cavity and calculate all specific local isotypes. Uh, take NEA Altia uh, as an example. The unit cell has eight cavities, uh, so it's possible to uh, obtain a kernel with eight isotherms as shown in the graph on the right. This idea was proposed by Moth Framework uh, in the recent publication of the Neymar group. Uh, here, how the method works. Uh, first, we, we, we propose a model for, 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 for the zoolite. And we also def define a first field. In this case, the, the model is, was taken from the study of Plough and Smith. And the first field was developed by our group in the preview study for Fauchel sites. Um, it's important to note that uh, we, we can choose another model or you can choose another first field. The, the, this met the, the methodology of uh, is, is separate from the model and first fields that uh, are used. Well, with this combination, model and first field, we obtain a simulate isotherm, is the blue line in the graph, close to the experimental isotherms. Uh, this experimental isotherm that we are showing are from two samples of NEALTA synthesized in different laboratories by our group. This, this simulated global isotherm, the blue line, the simulated global isotherms, should be seen as the a first guess about the actual structure of the zeolite revealed by the experimental isotherms. This is, this is important to keep in mind. Um, the local isotherms of our proposed structure to represent the NEALTA sample can be classified in energy levels by calculating the respective heat of adsorption. Uh, thus, we, we propose, our proposed model has two super cages with strong interaction, three cages with moderate interaction, and three cages with weak interaction. Again, we emphasize that this is our first guess to represent the zeolite framework. When you submit the experimental isotherm, in the case of the uh, prime one sample, uh, of the kernel of local isotherms, a different proportion of energy distribution of the supercurrent emerge. Uh, strong interaction 
that was two goes to 3.5 kgs. Uh, the moderate iteration that was three goes to 2.7 kgs. And the weak iteration that was three uh, goes to 1.5 kgs. Uh, with the new with the, 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 the new ratio, a, a, a better agreement between the simulated and the experimental isotherms is obtained. Uh, here in the graph, the global isotherms, the dot line is the global isotherm, was our first suggested structure to represent the zoolite. And the solid line, the blue solid line, is the new global isotherm representing the distribution suggested by the kernel, which we believe represent a more accurate picture of the real zeolite. This result has interesting implication for molecular simulation, because instead of generating new first fields parameters, as is common in the literature, it seems more adventurous to identify internal variation of that occurs in the sub the cavities of the zeolite. Uh, this variation uh, resulting from the variables to which the science process itself is subject. And, and you, you really can't control. Uh, another very promising result can be observed for the experimental zeolite performed by Martin Calvo. Again, uh, um, in the kernel result in 3.8 kg with strong iteration, 3.2 with moderate iteration, and one with weak iteration. Uh, with the, this new mix of, of, of cage, we, you obtain a, a almost perfect fit between experimental and simulated isotherm. Again, we understand that the new energy distribution, this new energy distribution proposal is more faithful representation of the real material synthesized by the authors. Here we present a practical application of the methodology to identify the degree of functional super cage existing in a sample synthesized from unconventional percussion. Uh, many zeolites are synthesized from unconventional materials like fly ash, rice rusk, or kaolin. Then uh, it is difficult to, to know if, uh, with a, a simple un analyzed technique, if the, the structure is okay or not. Uh, then our, our proposal is, is that if the crystallization and distribution of cations were perfect, we would expect it an adsorption line with the black curve here. Uh, th th this is uh, adsorption with only one super cage functional, two super cage, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight super cage. Um, uh, we are now compare do two experiment two experimental samples of NALTA zeolite produced by different synthesized methods from the same unconventional raw material, this raw fly ash. Uh, this shows that one of the roads, uh, the, the, uh, the, the triangle, the empty triangles, th this road of synthesize uh, results in a zeolite with at least seven of the eight functional cage, while the other road, the black triangles, uh, uh, only six, uh, only six super cage were active. We emphasize that previously it was not possible to to use adsorption technique to extract any useful data in this type of materials. 
where any any to uh, uh, present diffusional problems. With our proposal to CO2, a, a range of new information becomes possible. Uh, finally, uh, I invite all of you to visit our site, lab3d.ufc.br. You will find a, a web application, the characterization tab in this, this tab here, uh, that perform poor size distribution calculation with all the kernels we present today. All you need is to send an experimental isotherm of nitrogen at 77 Kelvin for unstructured carbon materials, or an isotherm of CO2 at 273 Kelvin for NA LTA uh, zeolite. Uh, thank you. We finish the presentation. Thank you, Professor Sebastian Lucena, so much for the presentation. We are now open to questions. If somebody wants to participate, please enable your microphone or write it down in the chat and we will read it. Also, our YouTube viewers can write it down too. Let me ask, uh, we start. For sure, okay. Professor. Uh, <clears throat> Senna, thank you for the nice uh, overview about that characterization. I think it was very interesting for us, for the Atom group that we are working a little bit with this. Uh, uh, thank one you for first the question. Uh, <laughs> OK. Uh, what, one first question is, uh, 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 do you have, uh, you use normally a 2D GFT calculation uh, or you, you get this uh, from somebody else? So uh, are you working on DFT as well? No, we use the software provided by the equipment. Uh, the micromagnetic okay. equipment and the quantum equipment. We use the, the okay okay. We, but normally we, use we, we did stop. We, we did not perform uh, uh, investigation in the GFT. Okay okay okay. Now just to 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 know that. Uh, <clears throat> I I. I not exactly get uh, why uh, uh, you expect a continuum uh, pore size distribution uh, for the materials. Uh, normally you said, oh, okay, this is, is good because it gives you uh, not gap information, but uh, well, I, I, in my not, not experience uh, view, uh, I think that is I expect already this uh, some gap and uh, depend on the solid structure. Uh, maybe for amorphous, completely amorphous materials, maybe it's not uh, reasonable, but for structured uh, materials, more structured materials, you may, you may expect that, no? Okay, uh, th this is a, a old discussion <laughs> in, in, the, in the field. Um, I also believe that the, it's okay to, to present some gaps, but, but another line of, uh, I think you can say D do, for example, they believe that the carbon has all the pore size that you can imagine, but, but uh, I really don't believe uh, that, that this occur, I think it's okay to, to, to have some gap. But the problem with the homogeneous kernel is that the gap is in the same range. Uh, any carbon, you make a lot of analyze with a different carbon and the gap is in the same range. It, it, okay, this is practically impossible because any carbon has in this size, 
every time you, you, you make a, a pore size distribution with homogeneous kernel, we don't, didn't find, did, didn't find the, the, the pores in this gap. Okay, so something is wrong because any carbon has the, the, the spore size. Yeah, I know, I don't. Okay, I this is a problem. But if you obtain different gaps in different carbon, it's okay, I think. Uh, 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 there is nothing that... Uh, Prohibit. Hey, yes, that you have some gaps. It, I, I agree with you about this. Okay, thank you. Maybe I am going to ask something later. Let's let people ask first. Okay, thank you. So does anyone wants to ask another question? Well, so I think it's this. Um, our time is almost over and I want to thank you everyone for this discussion and once again thank you Professor Sebastian Lucena for the presentation. Okay, thank you Arthur, thank you Fred. Um, thank our you. seminars are, sorry, our seminars are being recorded and posted on YouTube, of course after the invited lectures agreement. Please check them out on our YouTube channel. And this is our organization committee. We are responsible for inviting and communicating with the lecturers. We also handle social media, video editing, certificate writings, and hosting. Thank you all for being here today. We will meet again in a few weeks since our next seminar will occur at Thursday, July 21st on the seminar that will be given by Professor Matthias Soms. See you there. <laughs>